The SEC is filled with schools who are consistently ranked in the top 25 for football and consistently compete for national championships. The likes of Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Auburn, and LSU have all experienced that ultimate peak since the turn of the century. Then you have the other teams who are competing and at the very least are making a bowl game. Then you have Vanderbilt football. They're one of three power five teams who have yet to have a single season with 10 or more wins and since 2000, they have made it to a bowl game just six times, with the last coming in 2018. So, that begs the question, what is going on with Vanderbilt football, and why, for what feels like their entire existence, has this program struggled with consistency? In today's video, we'll be looking at the various problems that surround the program, and what could be next for the school. This video isn't meant to bash the program at all, but really place some context on the struggles surrounding the university and what has ultimately been holding them back. Vanderbilt has been a member of the SEC since 1933, back when Tulane was a member, but they have yet to capture a single conference title. They have some seasons where they finished strong and made it to the postseason, but there is almost nothing of note, and more often than not, there are seasons where they win one or no conference games. From 1976 to 1980, they didn't win a single conference game, and I couldn't imagine the outrage that would come from that if it happened today. Moreover, Vanderbilt has been ranked a total of 31 weeks in 118 years, have had three or fewer wins 15 times since 1995, and has never had a top 100 signee in the 22 years 24-7 sports covers in its database for recruits. However, recently, I feel like Vanderbilt has hired some great candidates for their head coaching vacancies, all of which have been defensive-minded guys, and while the big achievements haven't been there, they have made six bowl games since 2000, and I think that this could be a potential platform for the school to build on, and this era will be our primary focus. First, in this era, you have James Franklin, arguably the program's best head coach. In his time here from 2011 to 2013, Vanderbilt made it to the postseason in all three seasons, and he was the closest to getting a 10-win season, where the team won nine games in 2012 and 2013, which included bowl victories in both. They were so good that they received a ranking in the AP poll, ending the year at number 23 and number 24 respectively in those years. With Franklin, the Commodores ranked in the top half of the nation in offensive and defensive scoring, including an impressive 18.7 points per game allowed in 2012 that saw them finish 15th in the entire country. It was around this time that Vanderbilt was also recruiting very well, and they finished with the 26th best class in the country in 2013, according to 24-7 Sports. The success had moved off the field where Vanderbilt got a brand new indoor practice facility, which nowadays seems like the surefire way to tell when a program is on the come up. When Franklin left, Derek Mason took over. He carried on some of the momentum that Franklin achieved, and serving from 2014 to 2020, Vanderbilt made it to the postseason twice, but ultimately lost both games. Mason's results with the program were good, and his ultimate goal was to continue to develop these players and get them graduated, something that a lot of people loved him for. He also managed to keep the success against rival Tennessee going, where they won three straight games against them at one point. But on the field, his tenure started off cold and ended cold. But the pair of six win seasons in 2016 and 2018 were up there with some of the best since 2000. By the time he left, however, Vanderbilt ranked 126th in the nation in scoring and 113th in points allowed in 2020, and things had managed to hit rock bottom. But they went out and hired a great leader in Clark Lee from Notre Dame, and his start hasn't been the best either, but this past 2022 season they did go 5-7 after being predicted to finish last in the SEC East. In this year, they snapped a conference losing streak, something that the school has been accustomed to. But among all of the great coaches, there have been some embarrassing losses, some of which less excusable than others. Sure, anybody can be beat, but SEC schools remain competitive no matter how bad it gets. But that hasn't been the case for Vandy. And more than half of their conference losses, some of the results post-Franklin were not even close. Since 2014, they have lost 29 times by at least 20 points in conference games, and there were times where they were getting beat by almost 40 to 50, even 60 points. So already, off the top, there is a huge gap in production on the field from Vanderbilt with every other school in the SEC. This can come down to a few issues, including scheme and play calling. While sure, this is a tough job, at the end of the day, this is still a Power 5 school and you have to find a way to be competitive. 
you have schools doing more with less and the on the field product has left a lot to be desired and under mason he couldn't get the team to be competitive or further develop guys into future pros at the same rate as franklin and he's not alone in that as that was the reality for a lot of the coaches before franklin the reality for James Franklin is that he was a home run hire and ended up proving to be one of the best head coaches in the country, and Vanderbilt has just missed on a lot of previous head coaching hires. One could point to the attention and care that the team has received, both within the school and outside of it, which has certainly played into the football culture at the school. Nashville is a great area that has the potential as a city to field a successful football program, but playing football in a big city does have its drawback. There are plenty of other opportunities to find entertainment in the area, including with sports, so a program that already doesn't win enough isn't going to just draw fans just because. Nashville has become a prime spot for opposing fans to travel to, and has almost become a spot for fans to take over. Vanderbilt has a small stadium already, but the stadium sometimes doesn't even reach 50% capacity. Students don't care about the program, but that is because there is nothing that incentivizes them to go. Football hasn't been a part of the culture at the school. It is a prestigious academic institution, so that comes first, but yet, that doesn't stop people from going to basketball or baseball games. They don't go to football games because the product on the field isn't good, there's no exciting draw on the field in terms of play style, and attending the games as a whole can be a nightmare. One such instance occurred when Vanderbilt played Alabama in 2017 after starting 3-0, and the university didn't have the staff in place to get everyone into the stadium and in their seats until the end of the first quarter. This was one of the most hyped games in recent program history and they couldn't even get fans into the game. But then you look at the resources and we can begin to piece together the reason for said struggles. There isn't much of an investment from the school to the program as other SEC schools. They finally got an updated locker room in the 2020 season, but after building an indoor practice facility, Derek Mason's team saw no significant upgrades. Looking at deeper specifics, Vanderbilt doesn't have the same quality when it comes to things like nutrition and strength and conditioning as other schools either. It was also reported that at one point, the AC had gone out during summer workouts for months in 2020. And if you know anything about the summer heat in the South, that's just brutal. A wise man once said that attitude reflects leadership, so a program that isn't actively investing in its team, not really worried about the on-the-field results, will have a fan base that doesn't either. A quote from a local newspaper called The Tennessean sums this best. And as bad as Vanderbilt football historically has been, I can't recall a time when the talent gap between the Commodores and the rest of the SEC was this vast. That's not an exaggeration, and it didn't happen by accident. It's a direct consequence of a decade in which SEC schools became a lot wealthier, and 13 of 14 used that money to escalate an arms race investing heavily into football programs, lavishly spending on more and more luxurious facilities, and expansive budgets for recruiting and staff. While there's other prestigious academic schools like Northwestern and Sanford that have had trouble finding success on the field, most of them have done something notable in the past decade and played for something that matters. Vanderbilt, at the very least, should be in a position to make games tough for top schools, and they can't do that because the resources aren't there to be able to do that. When it comes to recruiting, they can't win small battles. Sure, they have the intrigue of playing in the SEC, but there's no past success, play style, team or school culture, or anything within the school and the program that could draw the majority of recruits to them over any other school. Comparing them to the rest of the SEC, there are guys on some teams who don't play at all who could play for many other teams around the country, and unfortunately, Vanderbilt doesn't have that same depth or talent pool, and that shows on game days. Former quarterback Jordan Rodgers talked about the mentality of the team and stated that you can't lose before you get off the bus. And I think that was something that we fought for so long at Vanderbilt because we were so used to just not being good enough. We went into games, even when it was close at times, we just had that feeling like something bad was going to happen. There's no way we're gonna win this because we don't win these type of games. Until they have SEC level resources, it won't really matter who is the face of the program, because in the SEC where 13 other universities would sacrifice millions to see conference titles and national championships, that culture doesn't exist for Vanderbilt yet. Once that culture is created, I think that we could see the program turn around. The reality is that Vanderbilt might not be a destination to ever compete for a national championship, at least for the foreseeable future, but the potential is there to be a team that can play for something that matters. Vanderbilt isn't at the level of an Alabama or Georgia, and it might not be for a few years, but Jordan Rodgers also made a point about the status of the program, 
where he stated that you're going to compete with schools like Kentucky for nearly every recruit. Kentucky was in the same boat. We beat Kentucky every year I was there and we smashed them in my senior year. They were at the lowest of lows and they committed a lot of money to their facilities. They got the right coach in there and obviously now, they're one of the better programs in the country year in and year out. And that brings me to my final point. Is there hope for the team? Head coach Clark Lee has been on record stating about how this is going to be a project and this success won't come overnight. This change is going to come from within, more aggressive efforts with recruiting, play styles, and team culture. In his first two seasons, Vandy went from being a team that won two games by single digits against teams out of conference to winning five games including wins over Kentucky and Florida. The talent gap is still apparent, but Vanderbilt is finding their own ways to win games. From last season, Clark has attempted to find players with a different physical profile to help match the intensity of the conference. Maybe this will help, maybe it won't. But the Commodores have realized that old strategies didn't work and they are pivoting into a different direction. Perhaps the most telling reason for hope is new investments and ventures from the school for the program which have been long awaited. Vanderbilt has an NIL program that includes subscription plans in order to support student athletes known as the Anchor Collective. They have also attempted to prioritize corporate partnerships with a directive led by Jason Burns. Lastly and most important, the school itself has launched a $300 million investment campaign for their athletics programs, which will include football. This investment will cover things like a football operations center. This is the investment that the school has needed. All in all, time will tell if Vanderbilt football can be competitive or not. At least for now, the effort is finally appearing to be there. Maybe they can't make the jump up to Alabama's level, but it is possible to be competitive in other ways in college football. Take Kentucky for example. They weren't the most successful team in the SEC since 2000, but in recent years they've been one of the better teams in the conference, producing NFL players, and that all started with patience and investment. It just takes one great leader who wants to stick around and build a program, one great recruiting class, and one game to turn a program around. If there's any hope for a turnaround, Vanderbilt is going to have to get the right leader in the program. They're gonna need a guy like James Franklin who can rally the troops and make the most out of the situation that is at hand. Can Clark Lee be the guy? Only time will tell. I don't really have a strong opinion on him one way or the other, and I really just wanna wait out the situation to see what happens. But without a doubt, they need a mentality change within the program. That quote from Jordan Rodgers was very telling. This school has a losing culture when it comes to football. They think they're gonna lose games before they come off the bus, and they need a leader, someone who is the head coach to guide this team into that right direction and believe that they can beat anybody and win in any game. This has been a video on Vanderbilt football. I would love to hear you guys' perspectives on why you think Vanderbilt is struggling, especially from a fan's perspective, because I feel like in a big city like Nashville, especially competing in the SEC, Things just have to be better, but from an outsider's perspective with a little bit of research, this is just some of the reasons that I've seen for why the program is struggling itself. But I would love to hear from you guys, see what you guys think, especially Vanderbilt fans. So thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, I will see you guys next time.